All right, all you Big Bass lovers, welcome back to DeMont's Big Bass. Um, it came to my attention by a person that I fish with a lot, who fishes with me in the wintertime, that I didn't show you like one of my favorite winter baits on my last video. And he's right. And it's because I kind of fish these baits all year long. Um, these are my two bags that I keep on my boat, both completely full of, you guessed it, Ned baits. I have different Ned systems, and I'm going to show you some of my systems I like to use. i um, show you some of my favorite things I like to do. Um, I guess I'm going to start off. Um, for those of you who don't know, Ned rigging is basically using a little um, two, and a, like two and three quarter inch little stick bait. Uh, this is basically the, the Z-Man TRD, or some people like to call it turd. As you can see, it's really stretchy. Uh, this one is green pumpkin, um, green pumpkin orange, one of my new favorite colors. Let me show you some of the classic ways people rig them. You take your little mushroom head like this right here. What I like to do is I like to ring the skinny side to the end, and I'll come in here if you want. If you don't know, lay your bait on here. See where you want to come out at. You're going to come in the middle. You're going to come up right there. And what I always do when I get to about this state is I grab it, I pinch it, and I pull it. And what that does is it pulls the plastic up over that barb. And I make it where it don't come back down again. And one good thing about elastic, if you don't get it exactly where you want it to begin with, just pull it back down and do it again. I want to go a little bit deeper than that. There we go. You're going to bring it like this right here. Pull it up over that barb. Pull it up over that barb. And there you go. There's your first rig bait. You can also do this exact same thing with your TRD bugs, your hula sticks, your TRD hogs. Um, I have lots of other different, like, um, baits that I use like this. Um, another style head you can use is a blockhead style head. Um, you're going to basically do it the same way. Except for this, it's Texas rig. You're going to come in a little bit. You're going to come out the bottom. I came in a little bit too thick. So I'm going to... Come back up. I'm going to bring this up over the little shoulder there. I'm going to see where it lays. Come through the bottom. Come back out the top. Then give it a little bit of a tech expose. And there you go. There's your perfectly weedless Ned rig down. You can also do this with the other ones as well. Um, now I'm going to show you some kind of stuff that I do a little different than I haven't seen, seen other people do. Let me take this off of here. Okay. So for this next step, I'm going to be using some bobber stops. Um... Some round circle eye has to be circle eye drop shot weights, and also use um, brass worm weights, or you can use cylinder weights, or you can use kind of pretty much whatever you want to use. All right, let's get started on what I'm gonna show you here. Um, one these two these two ne next two rigging options I'm gonna show you is basically called freestyle rigs. A freestyle rig and a finesse Carolina rig. These are the hooks I like to use. This is a VMC 2 alt finesse Nico hook. See, it's got the little fluorocarbon keeper here. And then this is a one on the VMC finesse Nico. Um, these are by far my favorite little finesse hooks. They're super sharp. Um, they do the job. So to start off this, let's show you the finesse rig first. The, uh, not finesse, but the free rig. 
Um, I brought in some old blue braid just so I can kind of show you with it. Just so you kind of get the idea of it first. Everything wasn't hitting it right now. Okay, so with this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out one of our drop shot weights. This is a 3 16th, which is probably my favorite weight to use for doing this. I'm just going to go through the eye of it. All right, and you're going to let that go up your line. Next thing what you're going to do is you're going to get you a bobber stopper. You're going to thread your bobber stopper on. After you thread your bobber stopper on, I like to pull it up a little bit. Then you're going to pull your bobber stopper on. It's going to leave you with something like this. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie on the hook. I'm going to use the same knot that I always use with this. Um, okay, let me... I'm going to use... This is the one knot. Okay. What I always use is a pixin knot. Or a lot of times I use a double pixin. That's where I go through. I come up here. Pinch it. It'd be better if I give myself a little bit more line. I bring it around. Hmm. This braid is really thin, so it's hard to work with. But anyway, I pinch it up here. And I go around three to five times. If I'm doing a double pitch, and I do around three times. Go around and around and around again. Then you're going to come back up through the loop you made up here. Now, if this is fluorocarbon, I'll be, be moistening my knot. Did I get it right? <laughs> okay, so you're going to come straight up here. And you're going to pull it tight. Then you're going to, of course, trim off your tag in. Okay, so you know how this works. And then you're going to take your bait. Your bait's going to come in the same end you went before. I like to go in. And bring it back up over top of the little keeper barb. Line it up on your worm here. Bring it down. And a Z Man's so soft, you ain't really got to worry about it. You got to put it up in there. Once you set the hook on, it's going to pop through that little worm. But what happens is, and I like to keep my bobber stopper about um, three to four inches away from the hook and worm. So about right there. So when you're casting this out, your little weight. Drop shot weight goes down. It, it doesn't go all the way to the worm. So it doesn't pull your worm all the way to the bottom with it. And so when this little worm, it floats. So it'll actually start, what's why it's called a free rig. It'll, this will be on the bottom. And then it keeps going up, 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 up. <laughs> How much line you want to give it. And a lot of times the reason I like this is I can, let's say I, the fish are really finessey right now. They're, I can also pitch with this with a 15 pound fluorocarbon. But when I'm using something small like this, it's not that's not what I'm doing. Um, like I know there's a lay down. I'll take this to the, the end of the lay down and I'll keep letting it go up to the top part of the tree and then I'll bring it down, bring it up, bring it down. And I can keep this weight pretty much in the same place and just let this lure just keep going, this worm keep going up and then back down. And then up, then back down. And a lot of times, if you know there's fish in the end of that tree, he's going to come out and get it. But okay, there's the free rig for you guys. 
Um, it's, this is really a deadly combination because the fish don't see this very often. I know free rig is really big in Japan. Um, it's really big some other places here as well, but um, just haven't really seen it that much. And I don't really talk about it that much when I'm fishing tournaments and things. I don't want other people out there doing it. The main reason why I started doing it is because a lot of people throw the TRD. And if I'm throwing something different, then that gives me a better chance of catching fish more than another person. That's just how it works. But, I mean, I've never kept it from nobody. If somebody asks me about it, I tell them about it. All right, so let's show you the next rig here. Okay. The next rig is going to start off. This is my Finesse Carolina rig. And I'm going to start it off with a bobber stopper. You're going to take the bobber stopper there. I like to give it a good amount of line. Pull the bobber stopper on. Okay. Now, this is not like a regular Carolina rig. This is more like a split shot rig. I don't use a swivel. I don't use beads. And my weight is stationary. All right, so I like to use, this is a, a 3 16th ounce brass weight. Um, you kind of get the feeling that I really like 3 16th, and I do. Um, 3 16th especially means I like to do light flipping with 3 16th. Um, you'd be really surprised how the amount of fish you can catch with 3 16 like just fishing a 3 16 ounce, uh, um, a, just like a, a finesse worm right beside a dock peel pollen, and how much you'll actually work it. Okay, so there's your, your bobber stopper, your weight, and then we're going to put another bobber stopper on. And these are just cheap little eagle bobble stop, eagle eagle claw bobber stoppers. That's kind of a, a mouthful. I'm trying to say it sometimes, bobber stopper. Okay, then you get your other bobber stopper on. You pull it off, and I like to bring it up and basically cinch it right behind my weight. And then. Your weight doesn't go nowhere when you're casting it. Now, if you fling it really hard, it's going to go somewhere. It's going to move. Uh, my favorite bait with this is the hula stick. And I like to use a 2 watt the VMC Nico, Finesse Nico. And this is a 4-inch bait. So I, I go to the next size hookup. Um, I want to tie the exact same knot. So bring it up. Bring it over. This is easier with fluorocarbon or a stiffer line. This little braid right here is so thin that it makes it hard to do. So then I'm going to come around three times. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see this every time. But now if it be fluorocarbon, I'll be wetting my line. But you're going to take your loop you made right here. Sorry. <laughs> Go back through your loop. And give it a tug. Then cinch it down. And then you're going to cut off your tag. And if you haven't ever gotten any good braid scissors, these, um, what are they? Ain't there, um, yeah, um, CUDA. These CUDA, these are not the micro CUDAs. These are the CUDA Titan, Titanium Plus. These are some really good braid scissors. I got them at Walmart. I think they were like six, seven bucks, eight bucks, something like that. I like the best braid scissors I think I've ever had. Um, I thought my dial ones were better, but before, these are way better. And this is one of my favorite colors. This is called Mud Bug. And a hula stick. So you can see it really good here. I'm 
Okay, then we're going to do it basically the exact same way. You're going to come into your worm. You're going to come down. Get it on that keeper. You're going to line your worm up. Now I like to bring it down. Come straight back. Make sure the nice worm's nice and straight. And there she is. And I usually fish this about usually 12 inches between weight and bait. Uh, sometimes I fish it a little like 10. Sometimes I go even shallow, even shorter. Just depends on how deep you're fishing. And this kind of works. This is really good. You don't, it doesn't have to do all the, the different things that a Carolina rig does. And this is a super buoyant bait and it basically rises up. You'd be surprised just how if you pull this bait out, you're fishing a really tough day and you start fishing, especially on clay points and things. Um, this, <laughs> this will catch you a limit quick. And I do mean quick. All right, I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna show you the last little thing I like to do. Well, there's several other things I like to do, but this is, this is like the main things I like to do with my, with my TRD stuff. And it's a different kind of concept, especially I use during this time of the year, during the winter time. Um, and one thing about Z-Man, just because I poked it a couple times, it's still good. It's, I'm gonna put it right back in the bag, use it again tomorrow. And I'm not gonna have any problems, no issues out of it. Um, I have caught probably 40, 50 fish off one bait before. Um, all right, let me get this line cut off. All right, so next thing I want to show you real quick, let me pull this weight off real quick. All right, so I got everything cleared out. Um, a lot of people are out throwing jigs in the cold. All right. A lot of people... I've seen this, but they haven't tried it. Um, I fish these in an eighth and three sixteenths. That's the only ones I get. Um, it has a nice little wire keeper, well, wire weed guard here, I mean. Uh, what I like to do is I like to bend them a little bit forward. I like to just bend them a little bit because they're pretty stiff when you first get them. Ouch. And then I like to take my TRD bugs. And this is one of my favorite colors used with this color. This one is called, um, this one's called Pond Scum Perch. See, it's got light blue and darker blue and orange and pink and green pumpkin in it and brown. What I like to do is take your little bugs here. I like to always put it purple side down on, on the back anyway. Never done this with the camera on, so it's kind of hard for me to see what I'm doing. Sometimes these little skirt pieces here get stuck together, so you gotta pull them apart. Okay. Just gonna thread him on here. This has a good keeper on it as well, just like all the Z-Mans do. All Z-Man jigs are made for Z-Man. Even their spinner baits, their their original chatter baits sometimes don't do very good with Z-Man, but you you can still make them work. All right, you're going to push it up on here. It's going to go up on that barb. That went a little off on it. Let me second here. 
you still gotta grab the collar and you gotta give it a little pull, a little tug up on there. All right, and there she is. Um, you know, I adjusted the weed guard back down a little bit from when I straight pushed it up when I was putting the bait on. Um, this actually works really good around through rocks, wood. And you're gonna separate this right here. Let me sure I told you that. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of action, especially in the winter time. Um, has kind of a slow fall because of this trailer. Uh, this one here is a eighth ounce. Uh, it has eighth ounce. Um, I have in tournaments caught fish up to about seven pounds on this. Um, so just because it's a little bait doesn't mean it won't catch big fish. Well, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below. I'll answer anybody's question. Uh, if you know somebody that could, this could help them, share the video with them. Uh, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let me know what I'm doing. Um, if I'm helping you, let me know. Um, if this is something intriguing to you, let me know that as well. Uh, subscribe to the channel just so I can start building this a little more and try to get more and more involved in it. I know I'm still getting kind of green to the YouTube game. I'm still working on it. I'm trying to bring you better content. And guys, I'm going to sign out. Um, we have some bad weather coming in the next couple of days, so you guys stay safe. All right, guys. Have a great day.